It was an accident. About an hour ago, a small jet went down inside New York City. The president was on board. President of what? Gas, check. Food, check. Water, check. Weapons, check. Everything, check. Network, check. Multiple places to go, check. Chemical suits, check. You name it. All right, folks, welcome back to Prepper Now. Thank you for uh, allowing me to not do a video last night. <laughs> Wanted to, but um, it was uh, not in the cards. Crisis report was a little too long, a little too busy of a day. So definitely had some, uh, some chill time, but um, a lot going on over in the... Uh, well, in the world, really. So, I thought I would do a little bit more of a deeper dive here on uh, explanation of uh, why I think things are really kind of getting set up for the grand show and we're pretty close. So, first and foremost, let me, let me tell you the difference between both of my channels. The Prepper Now channel is more of my opinion, and Crisis Report is more of a straightforward, this is what's going on. Now, do I get aggravated with some of the things going on in the world and show my emotion? Yes, I do. But when it comes to reporting things, it's more of a, this is what's going on, and this is what I'm hearing. Here, this is more of an opinion, okay? gentleman over there said uh, Israel is not our ally and we're going back and forth and I quoted Wikipedia and the uh, now the US State Department because he's like oh Wikipedia really it's like well that's how basic of information this is now he has a good opinion it's a good opinion but officially written down and in ways Israel is our ally they are on paper U.S. State Department, basic internet search. Do I like a lot of the aspects of that? Do I like all the money going over there? Do I like all the potential for us to enter into the war? No, I don't. But that's my opinion. Fact of the matter is, is if they get into a major conflict, they're our ally. And we're going to back them up. And that's happening right now. We are very close now, what do I mean? If you saw anything that was going on yesterday, basically what has happened now is Israel has gone from taking out Gaza, Rafa, Philadelphia, all the little areas, West Bank, Golan Heights, and doing a number on those to take out the Hamas fighters, which are the B team. They're not the big daddies. Now they're starting to go up against Hezbollah and the A-Team. Things are going pretty okay for Israel as it stands right now. But with the uh, UAV that went after Netanyahu's residence, with the one that took out the uh, base and uh, took out some soldiers of the IDF, they have a new UAV that is... Uh, really causing some problems, and I think the Israelis silently are concerned. Those are upticks. There's been an uptick in the style of missile and the frequency of what is being chucked back and forth. Israel has upped its game. They're now directly attacking Beirut in places they've never attacked before. Places that, if you ask the Eastern Telegram people, they're residential. You ask the Israelis, they are financial in nature. Funding of Hezbollah, if, if you will. I think of all the things that's most concerning, I think right now it's in the Asia Pacific, if I may. Korean Peninsula 
has had a lot of issues go on in the last seven to ten days. So I'm going to give you a little cursory report on those. First and foremost, North Korea changed their constitution so that South Korea is considered an enemy state and they are effectively at war. North Korea has blown up numerous roads that connect South Korea and North Korea and made it so logistically it would be tough to go up in there into the north if some kind of a conflict were to go on. Pyongyang got really aggravated by the former North Korean uh, refugees, people that escaped, taking drones and flying them up into Pyongyang and dropping leaflets. That really ticked them off. I don't have to tell you about all the missile testing and everything else. China and North Korea have some major arteries. They are neighbors sharing a border. They have designated some of those as only for military use. Logistics, okay? Getting things back and forth, that kind of stuff. That's just Asia in the last week. In fact, that's really in the last 72 hours. Maybe 96. Those are all logistical things that you do before major, major, major action happens. Another thing. They um, have got all the artillery up on the border with the safeties off, locked and loaded, ready to start chucking miss, uh, artillery. Major sorties are going on drills. And again, that's just Korea and China. Now, North Korea and Russia, they've teamed up now, and now you've directly got, through multiple sources, of course, I'm not there. I don't know if it's official. It's just them trying to uptick things, but major sources are saying up to 12,000 North Koreans are either headed towards the battlefront or they've got special units already there fighting. Supposedly in Kursk. So that is Ukraine versus North Korea. They're making propaganda. North Korea has. Saying we're coming. And we're not just coming into Ukraine. We're going to Kiev. Ukraine, of course, shot back. Well, we're going to do you in, North Korean, with their own little propaganda. That's a little bit different than Russia and Ukraine fighting over a couple of oblasts in the eastern portion of the country. Russia and Ukraine have now, we're coming up on year three, you know, we're, we're almost there. But the fact of the matter is, is that Russia is starting to mop up in some very critical areas. They're starting to go and, and take cities. There's this one road, I can't remember, the, it's like a numbered road. But it is basically a logistical hub and it connects north to south in the area and is extremely critical for logistics. They're very close to getting that and taking it. It's not quite there yet, but uh, there, there's a couple of cities that are critical. They've been fighting for for 10 years. Started in, This didn't start 2022. This started in 2014. They're starting to fall to the Russians. They're moving a little bit further west. Now, the Middle East... And this response by Israel on Iran and this leaked document changes things a little bit. And the reason why is because the Jerusalem Post came out and said that the people that leaked it were people in the Pentagon. 
So they were getting ready to, to do their thing on the 15th and 16th of October. And it was leaked out why they were going to, you know, where, why. I mean, a lot of really critical information. Now, I was privy to that information. Not everything, but just basically the main story and some of the, the, the details. And I chose not to push it forward. I chose to read it and move on. Because, to be honest with you, as I explained last night on the, on the crisis report, to me it seemed like a honeypot. It seemed like something to get channels in trouble because if you push out information of a classified nature, you're doing things illegal. If you do things illegal, you're not around much longer. Open source intelligence, OSINT, RUMINT, rumor intelligence. Okay. Classified documents, I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole. So, when you look at all of this information, and most of it coming out since the beginning of October, if not in the last week, a lot of different places. My fear is that as soon as one of these major dominoes falls, whether that's in the Koreas or in the Middle East or wherever, all the other dominoes are going to start to fall in line and fall. Another thing I didn't even mention is the fact that now it's pretty much a done deal that Ukraine is going to be joining NATO. And if you know anything about the Russians and what they've said, if that happens, it effectively means war between NATO and Russia. And they're actively preparing for it. That's why there's dragon's teeth all over the Baltics now. All this stuff is, is, is logistical. 20 C-17 Globemasters are now around Tel Aviv floating around. When you look at everything from a what's going on kind of standpoint, what I can tell you what's going on is we are extremely close to, if at the very minimum, having some regional wars. But if they are concerted, and if these countries are working, helping, aiding, and abetting each other, like, say, Russia getting a lot of the American intelligence on, or uh, American information on cruise missiles and sharing them with the Iranians so they can defend against them. That happened. And you see a lot of these countries like Iran, China, North Korea, Russia, and more get together to go for it. Well, that's going to look more like a WW3. Why do you think gold is, is surging its way to 2800 and beyond, probably 3000 by January? It's because everything is incredibly unstable on a geopolitical field. This is going to affect everything. It's going to affect the American currency. If you think for one second that inflation is under control or the economy is going to turn the corner, no matter who is in office, you're lying to yourself and you will rue the day that you did not say, you know what, I don't trust any of this crap and I'm going to go and keep prepping and get ready for shortages, logistical problems, supply chain issues, critical things that I, I, I'm used to having at the tip of my fingers not being there. Because that's, that's where we're at. That's how it affects you. No, you're probably not going to see, you know, SU-24s flying overhead. But you will definitely see prices go up. Five, six, seven dollar eggs. Three dollar uh, crap white bread. Stuff like that. That's what's coming. So... Please plan and prep accordingly. The logistics 
are going to become kinetic. We are very close to all that in my mind. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen tonight. It doesn't mean it's going to happen next week. But in our <laughs> not-so-distant future, one of these areas is going to pop off in all the other places. All the other dominoes are going to fall from there. And at that point, who knows where it goes. So plan accordingly. All right, friends. God bless. Thanks for listening. We'll uh, try to do a live stream tonight. Mondays are pretty chill usually. Not a lot going on. Sundays there's a lot of information because it's a day and a half usually. But I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your comments. The gentleman that put out the comment on uh, Israel and uh, and the USA. I get what you're saying, dude. I get it. I'm just saying officially. Like, like I said, over here... That comment, yeah, we probably have a little bit more of a, a, a an accord. Over there, it's more just like what's official, okay? That's all. All right, friends. Check out the links in the description. Um, hit the like button, leave a comment, all that kind of stuff. Help the algo. Uh, we're, we're, you know, growing for a reason. So that's all because of your support. Uh, you want to be a member? couple bucks a month definitely helps keep the lights on keep these videos coming and keeps the research of the crisis report going the most comprehensive news on youtube so you can understand everything as it's going on if not before everybody else because i usually get a lot of stuff at least 12 to 24 hours before most pl major places so all right friends god bless we'll see you on the next one